Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to be painting this beautiful semi-abstract sunset scene inspired by a photograph that I found on Pixabay. The link is in the reference below. Um, when I saw it, it actually took my breath away and I thought, well, I've got to have a go at painting it. I'm sure I'm not going to do it justice, but um, it's something that I really want to try and paint anyway. So even though my outcome was very different from this it's certainly inspired by the general composition which I think is really interesting with the silhouetted trees against that amazing sunset. I knew that I wanted a very simple smooth sky but with an effective sunset glow so I decided to use hot press paper. This is Saunders Waterford um, 140 pounds um, hot press paper. It's got a lovely smooth surface so let's see um, if we can get a beautiful smooth sunset. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape. My board's at an angle of 45 degrees and I'm using the wet in wet technique here. I've got a bamboo flat or hockey brush from AliExpress um, that I bought a couple of years ago and I'm wetting the sky all over. Um, I'm only gonna use three colors for this painting. This is the first and it's yellow ochre. And I'm going to cover most of the sky with yellow ochre. I'm hoping that will give me a sort of underlying glow for my setting sun and in order to then put on my beautiful, rich um, French vermilion, which is my second colour. So using the same brush, just sweeping it in really thick and rich, straight from the tube. Um, don't worry if it's looking a little bit sort of streaky at the moment. The beauty of the wet in wet technique is that we can um, we can add a bit of water to it using the water spray and we can tip and tilt it. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. But first I'm going to put in my third colour, which is indigo. And you can see how the indigo is mixing with the yellow ochre and it'll mix and blend a bit with the French vermilion. And I should end up with some really interesting um, neutral browny grey tones for my clouds and that should draw attention to and complement this beautiful bright French vermilion. You see I've tipped my board around 90 degrees and the paint is now running and flowing because I sprayed it with my mister spray and now I'm just feathering the brush through it in order to control the directionality of the paint and to build up my beautiful softly diffused sunset using just these three colours. I'll mop up any sort of spills or runs from um, the tilted paint as I go and turning the board back round the right way and laying it flat should hopefully keep those beautiful washes in exactly the same sort of place that they are. They'll just continue to soften as they dry. The next thing I'm going to do is use quite a nice little technique or trick to produce my setting sun shape. I've got a small coin, it's about a centimetre or half an inch across. I'm going to wrap it in a tissue um, so I've got the profile, the round profile of the coin covered in uh, paper tissue. And I'm going to place that onto my wet paint um, where I want my sun, uh, my setting sun, so it's quite low in the sky, and then just gently press down. When I lift it off, you can see that the tissue has lifted off the wet paint. And I want some sort of cloud effects going across the sun. Um, so I'm going to take a dry paintbrush. It's important that it's dry because if you use a wet paintbrush for this, um, you might get runbacks. With my dry paintbrush, I'm just pulling a bit of the wet paint across the sun with my small calligraphy brush for a couple of little subtle marks and now I've got to leave it to dry completely and then I'll come back and I'll put in the silhouetted land and the trees. So here it is, it's dried beautifully and I've now got my board back up at 45 degrees and I'm mixing up a rich dark mixture using my indigo and my French vermilion with a little touch of um, the raw uh, yellow ochre but not too much and this is my um, size 14 Escoda Ultimo synthetic mop brush and I'm just roughing in um, just very quickly and loosely a rough shape for the land. Um, I'm going to be really loose and very quick putting these marks in because I don't want any detail I just want it to look sort of fresh 
and just a very stark silhouette against the sunset. The sunset here, um, I want that to be the star of the show. The sun's the focal point. The trees are going to be like a sort of framing device that draws attention to the sky. So now I'm going to use the, the belly of the brush and the tips of the brush in that same colour to rough in a few tree canopies kind of joined together but with some sort of sky holes in them so you can see the sunset between and through the canopies and then once I've got my canopies in then I can go in with my calligraphy brush and just put in a few sort of vertical and shallow diagonal marks for tree trunks and branches just joining the canopies to the land keeping it really simple, really loose. I just want these very sort of scruffy shapes um, just to indicate these beautiful trees. Don't worry if things look a bit kind of sketchy and a bit rough, that's what we're looking for. The sunset and the whole sky um, is so smooth and softly diffused um, on the hot press paper that we need some sort of jagged rough marks in the trees and the land to kind of contrast with the smoothness of the sky. I think it's these kinds of polar opposites, the soft marks and the hard marks, that can really uh, pull a painting together. And even something as simple as this can end up being very effective if you think about these sort of contrasts and juxtapositions to positions as you paint. So just dotting in a few little ragged sort of canopies, branches, leaves coming off of these trees just to finish them off and, and add more to that kind of um, very sort of ragged sort of hard edged look but still with some soft edges amongst the trees as well and you can see the sunset really shining well through these trees. And it's at this point now that I'm going to um, make some changes. I'm going to use my artistic license to um, build up the bank a little more on the right here and to add a couple more trees. I've painted them in exactly the same way with the synthetic mop brush and then the calligraphy brush uh, for the trunks, um, just keeping it really rough. And um, I think I'm almost done. Just a few tweaks and little finishing touches, dots and dashes here and there. And so you could leave it at that if you prefer a sort of empty sky. But I'm going to add a few birds using the tips of my small calligraphy brush. But I'm making sure to keep them really small. I think a few birds around near to the setting sun kind of add to that evening look with the birds sort of going home to roost. And it also works to um, create a tiny bit of detail around the setting sun, which is, of course, our focal point. You can see that I'm keeping the birds very small so they don't sort of intrude on the scene. So I think that's just about finished. Um, now just to take off the tape and have a look and see if it looks okay with its clean white border, which gives us an idea of what it would look like if it was to be framed. So I hope that you'll give this sort of thing a, a try. It can be a lovely thing to do, even if you don't have hot press paper, it can be done on cold press paper just as easily. Um, I think I'm going to add a couple more birds, actually. I'm looking at this, and the birds that I've got, I like them, but I think I need a couple more um, around the sun in on the right and around it, if you see what I mean. But, I mean, only add more birds or any birds at all if you want to. Uh, they can make or break a painting, and I think here they look really good, as long as you keep them nice and small. Well, I hope this tutorial was useful. Um, if you like my approach, then please um, press the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because it really does help with my reach. Um, and if you like my paintings, then follow the link below to my Etsy shop where I have some paintings for sale. And if you would like to support me, then follow the link 
and come and have a look at my Patreon group where we've got a lovely group of people and we have a private Facebook group where people share their paintings with each other and chat and support each other. And I'm always on hand there to answer questions and to compliment you on your wonderful artwork. So thank you so much for watching and as always thanks to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel and I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.